welcome to ECA Limu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed pressure and we defined the pressure as the force acting perpendicularly per unit area. And we even derived a formula for finding the pressure in solids as pressure is equal to force divided by area. But now, if you have a liquid and liquids don't have a definite shape, how are we going to calculate the area of liquids like water? So in this lesson, we are going to calculate how liquids exert pressure in a formula called fluid pressure formula. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define a fluid and then derive a fluid pressure formula and then finally do some numerical calculation involving pressure fluid formula. So since we have said pressure in solids is equal to force over area, then therefore you need first force and then area for you to calculate pressure. But how are we going to get uh, the area of liquids since we know liquids don't have a definite shape? Remember, in the introduction to physics, we said among the three states of matter, liquids don't have a definite volume or the definite uh, shape, but they assume the shape of the container in which they are placed. So what we are going to do, we are going to place our liquid which we want to determine its pressure inside a container whose cross-sectional area we know, like in this case, uh, we have a, a cylinder with cross-sectional area A. If we know the radius, we can calculate that. And then the liquid has taken a height H. So we are going to calculate the pressure which this a liquid is going to exert at the bottom of this container. Then if we know that, then we can calculate our pressure, our pressure in liquids as force over area. But force in this case is the same as the weight of the liquid. Weight of the liquid. Then area in this case, we are going to use cross-sectional area. Of the container. Therefore, if now we write as pressure is equal to force, force in this case it will be weight over cross-sectional area of the container, but, but we know weight is equal to mass of the liquid times the gravitational constant. Therefore, we can write our equation as pressure is equal to weight, weight which is mass times the gravitational constant over area or the cross-sectional area of the container. But remember, when we were discussing density, we said density is equal to mass over volume. Then now, if we want mass, then it will be density times volume. This is true. Now, we have mass in our equation. Then now, if we replace that mass with density times volume, our pressure is going to be mass times volume, which is a density times volume, then times the gravitational constant over cross-sectional area. And now, are we able to calculate the volume of the liquid in this container? Yes, since we know the cross-sectional area and we know height, uh, the, the volume of uh, a liquid, volume is calculated as, in this case, a cylinder is a cross-sectional area times the height of that cylinder. Now, since we have volume in our equation, then we can su substitute volume with cross-sectional area times height. Then our formula will be pressure is equal to density times volume, which is now we are going to substitute it to be cross-sectional area, cross-sectional area times height times the gravitational constant over cross-sectional area. Now you can see cross-sectional area is appearing up here and it's also appearing down there. It can cancel out. And then our final equation will be pressure is equals to density times height times gravitational constant. And now this, this is the fluid pressure formula. So you can see this fluid pressure formula 
does not depend on the area of the container for you to get the pressure. If you know the density of the liquid and you know the height of the liquid that in the container and then you know the gravitational constant, then you are going to get your pressure in that liquid. So when we are going to discuss the factors affecting pressure in liquids, these are the only factors. The first factor is density of the liquid, then the second one is height of the liquid, and then finally the other one was will be gravitational constant. Just like in factors affecting pressure in solids, we get them from the formula force and area. So pressure or factors affecting pressure in liquids will come from the formula density, height, and the gravitational uh, constant. So from the above, you have noticed that we only have three factors that affect pressure in liquids and the cross-sectional area of the container is not part of the factors which affect the pressure in fluids or in liquids. Now the, fact, the first uh, factor is height or depth, the second one is density and then the other one is the gravitational field strength. And this one, you can get them if you know that single formula. We have said pressure in liquids is equals to H rho G or H height times density times uh, gravitational constant. So this one is H, this one is rho, which is density. Then this one is the gravitational constant. These are the only factors which affect the, the pressure in fluids, especially in liquids. So we can attempt one example here so that we see if we are at bar on what we are discussing. The question is a submarine. A submarine, these are people who go deep sea. A submarine is 20 meters below the sea water of density 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter. So here they have given us height or the depth below the water is 20 meters. Then they have given us the density of water is 10, 30 kilogram per cubic meter. Then they are asking us calculate the pressure exerted by the submarine by the water. So we are calculating the pressure. Now what you need to know is our, since we are dealing with water, this is a liquid, then we need our formula of calculating pressure. That is pressure in fluids is equal to height times density times gravitational uh, a constant times gravitational constant which is g so do we have h yes we have it here do we have density yes it's here then do we know g yes g is 10 the gravitational field strength is a constant you, you we always use 10 unless you are given so now if we calculate this uh, uh or we, if we calculate this pressure it will be pressure is equals to h or g which will be height is 20 meters times density is 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter. Then gravitational constant is 10 newtons per kg. Now, if you are keen enough, we can cancel out the units. You can see here we have kg at the top it will go with this kg and then we have a meter here one will go meter cubed it will go and remain meter square or then from there we will now have our answer as 20 times 10 30 over meter square times 10 newtons now this one will be will be 206,000 newtons per square meter, which we can write as 206,000 newtons per square meter. Remember, we have canceled the unit, but they have, the final answer is in the SI unit, which is newtons per square meter. Or we can just write it as 206,000 Pascal. Remember, one newton per square meter is equal to one Pascal. The second question is a boy is swimming uh, 25 meters below the water. So H below the water 
is 25 uh, meters. It is 25 meters. And then the density of the water, density is equals to one gram per cubic centimeters. And they are asking us, what is the pressure exerted on the boy by the water? They are looking for pressure. Now, our equation is, our formula, pressure in fluids is equals to height times density times gravitational field strength. Gravitational field strength, we know it, it is 10, so this one we have it. Do we have height? Yes. And is it in SI unit? Yes, it's in meters. Now, do we have density? Yes. What is the SI unit of density? The, the, the simple for SI unit of density is kilograms per cubic meter. But here we have grams per cubic meter. So it means we must first convert uh, the grams per cubic meter to SI unit of density, which is kilogram per cubic meter. So we use the relationship that we discussed in density where we said if you want to convert uh, grams per cubic meter to kilograms per cubic meter, you take the density you have in grams per cubic meter, you multiply by 1000, and then it will give you uh, 1000, in this case, kilograms per cubic meter. So now you have density in SI unit. If you don't use density in SI units, you will not score in this part. So if we proceed now, our pressure is equals to density in SI units times height in SI units times the gravitational field strength in SI units, which is going to give us pressure is, is equals to density is 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. Then we have height, which is 25 meter. Then we have gravitational field strength, which is 10 Newton per kg. Now, as usual, let's start with units. Kg will go with kg. And then meter will go with one meter here, and then it will remain meter square. And then now our answer will be two, our pressure will be 250. Thousand newtons per square meter, which we can write as 250,000 pascal. It is the same one pascal is equals to one newtons per square meter. So, students, that is the end of our lesson today. Remember, we have discussed how to calculate pressure in liquids, and we have said pressure in liquid is equal to height times the density, times the gravitational constant. And we have said these are the factors which affect pressure in liquids.